Oh, this one is going to be fun. Uh, this is uh, this is the first uh, release I'm going to talk about for the uh, Unbound range that Big Finish did. Uh, what it was, was it was kind of one of the few things they did to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Doctor Who by introducing this range that was essentially Doctor Who What If, uh, doing uh, six stories that were what-if scenarios. With this one being what if uh, the Doctor never was never exiled, was basically, he never became Unit's scientific advisor. He was sent too late to help Unit, and the damage was pretty, da pretty big. And it, not only do they, you know, do a what-if scenario, they always cast a different actor to play the Doctor. And this was one of the two that was so successful that later on, uh, five years uh, later in this one's case, they did a sequel to it. And basically, this is a pretty good kind of... Uh, it's one I recommend uh, fairly well because if... Uh, the, the years of, of history, the Doctor Who, kind of da are daunting and scary. And you want a place to kind of start. J just just get a story in. This serves like a lot of good Elseworld stories do. You don't have to worry about continuity because it's its own, wor its own world. And it's still very well done. If you're a stickler for... Obviously, well, here's the thing. As soon as you heard Elseworld or What If... And you're the kind of guy who does not like that kind of thing. You you click the video off or instantly said, yeah, no. Which is a shame because this is pretty damn good. It's, uh, I, th if, I think all of them were 70-minute specials. And this manages to basically, you know, get the scenario down, get point out, you know, what the big changes are in this world. And none of it seems like, oh, look, Doctor, without you, this person was shot. It it, it focuses on two characters. Uh, the Brigadier, who's played by Nicholas Courtney, and thank God, and may he rest in peace. And another one who we'll reveal a little later. Basically, what happened was, uh, this takes place pretty much after the War Games, where they would, the Time Lords agreed to sentence the Doctor to exile on Earth with no way of going, no way of leaving, with uh, the knowledge of the time of time travel wiped from the Doctor's brain, exiled. But the major change is they didn't drop him off in the 80s, where the unit stories take place, as long as you don't pay attention to modern on dead goofy continuity. Yet it it they they shot it in 1997, and at that point all this crazy stuff has happened. Uh, dinosaur invasion, autons, uh, other alien threats, and without the Doctor to help fix the problem all the time, they weren't able to save a lot of people. A lot of t t people died. In this universe, a character named uh, Mike Yates led a squadron and died in the process. A lot of a lot of things are different and put into extremes. And it's all represented through the eyes of Brigadier Leopard Stewart in this story, who's a broken version of, of of the character we all know and love. Whereas the regular Brigadier is a very proud soldier, calm, collected, ready to face a challenge. This one's broken. He is not afraid to just, you know screw screw everyone and just just basically say you know I, I had enough of this and go take a drink he's a completely t broken down version of the character at this point seeing the doctor again you think he'd be happy he's actually more disgusted than anything because he had to deal with the shame and the responsibility of you know all these lost lives because the the one person who helped them never came to help them and he's very angry at the Doctor at start, and he doesn't really get over it until the end. And even when he's starting to warm up to him, he, he he's only you know going, he's only keeping his distance still. He's getting closer, but he's still keeping his distance because he doesn't know. He's afraid if he trusts the guy again, he something bad might happen again, and he'll go through all this horror once more. 
it, it basically he's the embodiment of how screwed up this world is on on one side. The other side is eventually, and I'm, and I don't want to spoil this, but you have to mention it because it factors into the story later on. Eventually, they find the master who was stuck on this earth, but without the doctor to basically help him. Not not only get off, but to basically act as an adversary of sorts. He lost his way. He's lost his mind here, broken down. B basically, in one way or another, these two guys needed the doctor, and without them there, they just they just crashed and shut down. And it, it's really cool to see this because these are two very important characters to to the doctor. And vice versa. So I'm glad that they focused on these two characters to, to, to really look at the damage of this world. But that's kind of where the the story goes. After that, they deal with a... You know, they, they deal with any plot that kind of could have been done. They could have easily done... Because at, at one point, you, you find out a big part of the Master's plan factors into this item called the soul jar that uh, is this uh, artifact that's uh, hidden in a, in a monastery with all these monks chanting to keep the evil and contained in it at bay. And that part of this story, not to sound too cynical, that part could have easily been, you could have just basically set up the monk thing later. It, it I, I know that's a bit of a stickler thing. It's still, you know, we still need a very kind of, we still need something evil and powerful. And this thing does not sound like it's, you know, a thing to just kind of laugh at and walk away from. It's a serious threat. It's, it contains a lot of evil energy that could affect the whole world if not stopped. And what it is, it's, I, I, I don't want to spoil either. But there's one other thing I need to bring up. Because, of course, Unit does show up, and they're led by this character named uh, Colonel Permican Wood, who is played by some guy you may have known who's famous for wearing a trench coat named David Tennant. I think he was in... What was he doing? Oh, that's right. He was in the remake of Fright Night. I love that movie. Um, he is basically... Uh, think of that asshole general that shows up in... A lot of things, superhero movies, science fiction, who's very skeptical, respects absolutely no none of the protagonists or anyone who actually works for him. He's loud, he's shouty, he's kind of, well, a total douchebag. David Tennant is unbelievably fun in this role. He's hilarious at times. And he's barking orders. He's basic. He he does serve kind of as the, the the avatar of yes. I'm going to continue to point out the fact that you are ashamed. And his character's not really that nuanced. He's again, an angry Scottish guy. But it's great to hear Tennant act this character out. He just knows how to make this character sound loud as he should, and he's a lot of fun. And he works great with uh, the uh, main actors, Courtney and uh, David Warner, who I may, I don't even know if I mentioned David Warner played the Doctor in this, but yeah, David frickin' Warner plays the Doctor in this. Uh, we'll, we'll get them in a bit. Uh, going back to the Master and the Brigadier, uh, the, Brig the Brigadier is amazing. Courtney has had to, like we mentioned in Modern Undead before, He's had to play different versions of a character before. Heck, one of his the best stories I have not yet to see yet, and Courtney, before he died, has stated this was his favorite, was Inferno, where he plays an evil version of the Brigadier. Courtney's amazing at playing but g given the character, he knows how to tweak it and make it seem different. It's not just a writing thing. It 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 and though a big part of it is, you know, how he's written, he does carry that score. But he still, you know, knows enough to listen. He could at least, un least hear him out, and if, you know, it's a lead, he'll lead in. He keeps going and going. 
in all any scene he has to act off with Warner, yeah, you relish that they don't last any longer because he's great with them. I'm glad they paired him up with them. I'm, I'm. The, that's one of the many reasons why I'm upset that the actor passed away, that we couldn't get a third release with him teaming back up with this Doctor, because they were both great. Uh, moving on to the Master, who's played by Mark Gatiss, who's very well known for being a, a co-creator of Sherlock and a writer for the series in different forms, both for the modern series and he's written a book or two, I believe. I think he's written two audio dramas, too, for a big finish. He is very much playing a delgado e Master, a, you know, like the first Master we see, that, that version. And that's kind of it. He's not really he's not playing a different incarnation of the master. He's playing the Delgado master. And that kind of annoys me. I always want to see uh and it's only because we only see we see fewer actors play it. A lot of people may not like Eric Roberts' portrayal, but at least it's different. It looks you could definitely tell he it's not one hundred percent the same guy who was, you know, that suave Delgado or that over-the-top pantomime villain that was Ainley. Uh, Eric Roberts was much more over-the-top. He's just, again, he's he's not really put... I, I just didn't think Gages did anything to make it his own. He just, you know, played... He just played Roger Delgado. And that's good. He plays it well, but I wanted a new incarnation. And I was really upset we didn't get that. Uh, we, we didn't get really anything fresh beyond, you know, his uh, whole backstory about being left here. And that's kind of a letdown. On the, the, again, it wasn't terrible when I found out the Master was here. He's not badly written. He's not badly acted. It's just, it's nothing new. And that's kind of, I want things to be very, I want things to be different. And with that being so kind of the same, that it disappointed me. Uh... So, my final line, I like this a lot. If you're curious to check it out, it's not too bad. Uh, it's actually a bargain. Uh, they always sell this for five bucks. If you're really curious to, to, to... If you want a good Doctor Who story, not the the greatest plot in the world, but it's, it's very, very good. With good actors, and you don't have to worry about any real continuity, uh, definitely, well, check out the Unbound line in general, but this is definitely a good one to start with. And again, I never even got to Warner. Warner is the flip side of the coin of the Master, by the way. He's, you can definitely tell it's the Doctor, but he's a completely different version. He's much more patient. He's not, he's not trying to be Pertwee. He's not trying to be any other Doctor. He's just trying to be his own version. Very suave, command... Not not overbearing, but you know when the situation calls for it, he does demand. He does call for people to listen to him. He he tries his best to be a leader, but he also knows how to play sympathetic. And instantly between him and Courtney, and this was added strength to Courtney. At this point, he knows how to just approach. You know, you could point to anybody. You could point to a five year old and tell him. That's the Doctor Regenerated, and he'll treat it like it's the Doctor Regenerated. And the same thing goes out. Now, it, you can definitely tell that this guy, at least with you know the limited social interaction that he would have had at this point, seeing as the only times he would have met him is he, he would have been the second Doctor, you could definitely, they definitely click instantly like they know each other, like he knew him before. Courtney doesn't 100% act like he knows him because he doesn't understand regeneration at this point. And, you know, once he figures out it is him, he's not happy to see him, of course. But I thought those two were great, and I r am really upset we'll never get anything with those actors in general, but especially in these two roles. So, yeah, that that's sympathy for, a de for the devil. I like it. I think it's really good. Definitely check it out if you... If you want to start somewhere, this is a good place to start because it's uh, fairly cheap.